Hello there friends, this is Corey Glenn with Blue Sky Bio and was going to make a video showing you how to hack the digital denture software to make night guards with it. Now, a shout out to my buddy Russell Schaefer for showing me this. Uh, he had just tried this and said he got some great results making AMPSAs and so I started playing with it and lo and behold it's amazing for making uh, night guards. And again, it's not an intended function yet, it just happens to work great. And so I'm going to just show you how I would go about doing this. And we need to start the case by importing uh, the upper and lower models. So find your models and just select the upper and lower. Control select both of them and drag them into the 3D window. And it's worth noting you should be not in uh, the denture module, but rather in surgical guide mode when you're doing this. Okay, so now we have the models imported, and these are scans from a CareStream 3600, and you will note that there is an open byte, and I did that by scanning the upper, and, and this is my own mouth, by the way. Uh, so scan my upper, scan my lower, and then just used a leaf gauge and opened myself up, looking in the mirror to make sure I had some clearance between the posterior teeth, and then uh, closed on the leaf gauge and took the buckle bite, and that's what established this VDO. Now the other thing to notice is a lot of times you can pull in models and have a solid base on them. I'm, I'm finding that for this application, at least currently, it's useful to have the models be open on one side because we're actually gonna be uh, exploiting that, fe that feature by looking through the top to help adjust the occlusion and get that dialed in. Okay, so the first thing that I, I notice when I look at this is that now my models are oriented uh, correctly to uh, how they really are in reality, but I look down here at the skull and they're not appropriately oriented. So always, even in denture cases, you've got to make sure first that your digital models are aligned to the skull. Generally, they're just going to you know, have some arbitrary orientation in space. So for starters, I go into panels, model manipulation, and right down here you can see it says adjust position manually. And so I can uh, do that, use the widget, rotate this thing around, and then let's look at it from this side. Uh, this is looking straight from the nose, and so we're just paralleling this to the floor, basically. Hard to adjust that one from the side. So let's look straight on, and we can now set the cant. And now, if you look at this maxillary model, it's aligned in the same orientation to the skull. So we can turn that off, but now we've lost orientation with the, the mandible. How do you do that? We go up here and we select the lower model, and this time we're going to choose for our method of alignment direct and align to model. And which model are we aligning it to? We're going to align it to the green one. Um, it's, I won't go into the details of why that works, but just realize that STLs uh, save their relative position to one another. And so when these were in that original position relative to one another, if I change one by doing that, it pulls them back into their original relative position. So now my models are aligned to the skull. Let's go now and switch to the denture module. So we're in the denture module and you can see the skin changes a little bit on the models. And now we are ready to begin building the denture. And again, because this is a hack right now, you're not gonna be able to begin fabricating a denture unless you first put in a couple of teeth. So we're gonna make a lower night guard and I'm gonna just choose two random teeth, say add selected teeth as a chain, and then you gotta hold down shift and drop those in right here. Um, again, software thinks it is making a denture and, and the denture base is what is actually going to become the night guard. So just trick it, throw a couple of teeth in there. Uh, we're going to be able to turn those off uh, from this point on and really ignore them. So we've got a couple of teeth in. Now go to the denture module and we can uh, select which model we're going to build the, dent the uh, night guard on. The lower model, choose mandible and now push create denture. Now this step, and I'm gonna hide the maxillary model, this step is asking you to identify the path of insertion. So the brown you see, that's all undercut, and if I change the, the direction of insertion for this, you see how that changes a bit. So I wanna to try to figure out the, the best reasonable axis of insertion that minimizes the undercuts as much as possible. 
uh, realizing I'm also not going to carry my guard beyond the height of contour on the buckle. It's going to mainly be on the lingual here. And so that looks pretty good. And we can now go ahead and proceed. So uh, one other thing that you might want to establish right here is do you want to allow undercuts or not? And we uh, do not want to allow undercuts. We pretty much want to block those out. But I do find if you allow the undercuts up to about 0.2, um, that's going to create a little bit of a snap fit where this thing will go in and have some retention to it. Okay, so we're going to allow undercuts up to 0.2. You can play with that number, and it may be different for some people if they've got more significant undercuts. I have a, a grand total of an N of 1 uh, that I've experimented with this on. So this was just for my own mouth and how it seemed to work out best. So I go to the next. And now you see that a new model has been created blocking out those undercuts. This is a huge feature of, of being able to do this. Now what it's asking me to do is saying select the denture base. Okay, we're not making a denture base. We are making a night guard. So draw the perimeter of how you would like this night guard to be. And I'm going to go more or less halfway down the buckle surface. Then wrap around the lingual. Right on the distal. And back here, I'm going to go a little further down, uh, just below the teeth. I don't want to get into the freedom of the tongue or anything like that, but we'll get down onto the lingual gingiva just slightly. And then come back. When you get to this last dot, you're going to need to take that dot and drag it into the first one to close that contour. Okay, that's very important that you do that. And now you could fine tune this. You could hold down shift. And by the way, I did all that by holding down shift and clicking my way around. If I wanted to add another dot, I can click on the line with shift. I can fine tune the positioning of everything. Uh, once I like it, I can proceed forward. But this is also a very important step. First of all, what is the thickness of this guard? Um, I would say the three millimeters that it defaults to is probably appropriate for most people. How much offset do you want to create? What is the offset? It is the amount of slop space between the teeth and uh, the underside of the night guard. So if you were to zero that out, I would not expect that to fit very well. I'm gonna drop this down to about 0.15. So I did an initial one at 0.3 and that seemed to be a little bit sloppy. And again, this is a number you can dial in based on the fit and it's also gonna depend on your printer a little bit. So now I go to next. And now we have just a uniform three millimeter thickness base over the, the top of the teeth. Uh, again, it's, it's thinking it's building a denture base. And so the next two steps are going to be, uh, you know, built around the fact that it does think it's doing a denture. Just click next at this step. Um, and then it's asking you to define the gingival buildup. Um, we really don't want to build a gingival buildup. Just do it. Just kind of shift click your way around, close the contour, click next. It's going to make a little bit of a bump right there. Um, and now at this point, now that we've gotten past that, I don't need those teeth on anymore. I was just having those present to, to allow me to build this denture base. Okay, so now we can start the shaping process. And this is why I told you you want to use an open model because now the fact that this is open, I can look through the top of this maxillary model and begin using this to adjust my occlusion. So we're at the point right now where I can use the tools to add and remove material. So if I wanted to close this in a little bit, I could use this local deform tool, for example, and I can drag that up. There we go. So I've created a little point of contact on each tooth except for the central. I need to take it a tiny bit more. All right, a little more still. Let's look at it from the front. Now I'm no expert splint builder, so don't don't start messaging me about how uh, you know, an ideal splint should have three points of contact on each tooth. Just, just go with the principle here, okay? Um, on these posterior teeth, it's obviously too thick, okay? Three millimeters of thickness is too thick back here. So let's, for this, use the add and remove. And if I hold down um, shift, 
that activates the add tool and I would left click and add to this. If I hold down control, that is a remove tool. So I'm going to maximize the tool strength because I got a decent amount of material to remove here. And I'm just going to start erasing, particularly on the buckle. I'm going to design this to have a one or two points of contact just on the linguals of the, the teeth on the functional cusps. And so now we're getting awfully close. A little too much. If you go too much, just use back arrow. And I just want to minimize these to where there's only a slight pinpoint showing through. There we go. I like that. Let's come over and do the same thing on this side. Oh, I was holding down shift. Uh, I need to hold down control to use the remove. So I'm removing material. I want to remove it all from the buckle side and then just minimize these lingual cusp tip contacts until it's just a little spot. All right, that's looking good. Let's minimize that canine one. Let's shift here and add just a little bit so that developed one on the canine. And now if I hide this, right click this maxilla. Eh. Doesn't want to right click, so I can just go to the objects browser and turn this off. And let's use our smooth tool. Let's just smooth everything out here. So smooth tool, maximize the strength, and let's just give a good smooth surface to this whole thing because really it's when it's building that three millimeters of thickness it's just purely building a uniform three millimeters right over the top of the teeth and this shell is going to more or less conform to the shape of the teeth so if you want to minimize especially on the lingual where that tongue is going to be resting then you need to use that smooth smoothing tool to go over this and take out some of those bulges and and little dips in the surface okay so we're going to get a little bit more of a flat plane to this and then we can go back and reevaluate our occlusion again and if needed add remove whatever we need to do it's worth noting that when you're doing this um, let's turn that uh, let's turn the visibility of that back on and this model off when you're using these tools they will not affect the underside here the the side where it's fitting on the teeth Okay, so it stops right at that margin, so you don't have to worry about smoothing through and messing up your intaglio surface. It's not going to happen, so you can go way out to this edge and, again, give a nice smooth contour for the lip to rest against. All right, and now turn back on the maxilla again, and let's check out these contacts one more time. Let's really smooth through here. And now we can go back and use the add and remove, control, shift, I'm sorry, control and click. Let's get just a small pinpoint contact on each tooth, particularly in the posterior. Now you could use this exact same workflow and maybe I'll make another video of how to make an AMSA device. But since the skeleton is here, you can bet that we're going to be working on having a, um, a dedicated module for this so that you can do this as, as more of a dedicated function and not be having to hack the software per se. All right, that's looking really nice. If you wanted to add material again, just hold down the shift button and I'm going to smooth those anterior contacts just barely out of occlusion. Done. All right. So this is the completed guard. And now we're ready to export this. Um, 
just to show you in principle, if you wanted to do an AMSA device, it's, it's the same principles. You know, you're just going to be using your same tools, you know, drag up a, a platform here, stretch it this way, stretch it that way. You get the idea. Let's undo that. This is the guard that I want to export, file, export data. And the only thing that I want to export is this denture base right here. I don't need to complete a denture. We're really done in the workflow at this point. We, it, we're not making a denture. So standard quality, just export the denture base. I'm going to save this to the desktop and call this Quarry Guard. And I would, I would label your parameters. So this was a 0.15 undercut, I think is what I did. Um, no, 0.15 offset, 0.2 undercut. And that way you can label this and, and do a few on yourself. Test the fit. If you like the fit of that, then remember that setting and just do it on everybody from there out. So I do this and now we're ready to print. To print this, you would simply come up into your, I'm using the Moonray printer, plus we're going to grab Cory Night Guard. There it is. And you would not want to print this with the intaglio down because that will definitely affect the fit. You could lay it down flat like so. For sure, you're going to need to support it, so build some supports under it. If I'm printing something flat like this, I usually do medium on the supports. And let's just see what the print time would be. What would you print this out of? You could use the Night Guard uh, resin. You could use the Next Dent um, MFH material because that's a, a material that's good for long-term use in the mouth. It's composite. At 100 micron thickness, this is going to take 55 minutes to print. And I'm going to cut now to uh, actually trying this in so you can see how this thing actually fits. Okay, so here we have the 3D printed guard straight out of the printer. Um, I, I did the alcohol rinse, uh, put it in the curing oven, it's all cured up, and I've still got it on the support so that you know I'm not pulling any parlor tricks as far as the, the fit is concerned. Camera's shaking. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and remove from supports and we'll just check this uh, and I'm going to try to demonstrate the fit just straight out of the printer. Okay, so the intaglio was, was facing up in the printer so hopefully nothing has to be done on that. Now you will have the little printing supports and so when I'm removing these I just use a big fat burr like so. And I'm going to turn that on real quick and buzz those off. Excuse the noise. There it is. All right. Sorry. Here we go. So I'm just going over real lightly the little bumps that were left by the supports uh, just until I don't feel them really with my fingers, no sharp spots. I'm not trying to do a clusal adjustment or anything like that. In fact, I'm trying to do as little of that as possible because we dialed in the occlusion actually in the software. Okay, and now you could hit it with a polisher. Make sure that's nice and smooth. All right, and we're done. We're done. Dry this off. 
get the dust that should stay off of it. And now let's go to try in this. What do you think, Maggie? Do you think it's going to fit? Do you think it's going to fit? Huh? I think it's going to fit. Let's go see. All right. Whoa, that's, that's scary. How do I do this? All right. Can you see that? How do I do this? Can you see? Yeah. Dead solid bite uh, right out of the printer and great fit. And so I think this is a great use of the digital venture software for using night guards.